Last year, I made a video series where I go over my very own Monster Jam iceberg. In it, I go over the more obscure and even dark and disturbing sides of Monster Jam. Since making that series, my production value has drastically increased. Not to mention I got a lot of things wrong in my original videos, partially because I didn't have a script to go off of. I would just make a draft in my head and try to go off of that. Not to mention, if I trip over a word, I would trip over the rest of the whole sentence. Because my brain works over 9,000 times faster than my mouth. But with all that aside, let's go over the Monster GM Iceberg Redux HD Remaster 4K RTX All-Stars Battle Royale Season 69 Battle Pass and Knuckles. Whew, that was a mouthful right there. USHRA the USHRA, also known as the United States Hot Rod Association, was the unofficial name of Monster Jam until 1992, when it eventually became just Monster Jam, although you can see the logo on the track team shirts. Bulldozer Sponsorship Bulldozer was originally a partnership between Alberto Smokecraft Jerky and USA Motorsports to sell beef jerky in 1997. However, the truck's body design was popular among fans, so when the contract eventually expired in 1999, they decided to keep this truck running, similar to what happened to Blue Thunder after 2012. In 2001, a brother truck would debut named El Toro Loco, and would eventually replace Bulldozer. The truck ran until 2009, and even though it's retired, Monster Jam sure hasn't forgotten about it. In 2022, Mike Harper purchased the Bulldozer name, and it's currently unknown whether or not the truck will be resurrected. Bog Hog Bog Hog is a mud truck owned and driven by Weston Anderson, the youngest of the Anderson children. In my original video, I theorized that he would bring this truck into Monster Jam, similar to how Ryan Anderson did with Son of a Digger. However, Weston has since become yet another Grave Digger driver. Inferno 2003 Prototype In 2003, Hot Wheels Monster Jam was originally going to make Inferno. Unfortunately, the truck was cancelled following the September 11th terrorist attacks, and Mattel deemed it inappropriate to release a truck named Inferno. They would release the truck, but eventually the name was changed to Flashfire instead. However, since there were prototypes made and packaged, they have since become some of the most rare and exclusive Monster Truck diecast in history. In 2018, Inferno would eventually get a proper release in the Flashback series. Grave Digger NASCAR Paint Scheme in June of 2021, NASCAR driver Kevin Harvick would drive his number 4 Ford, sporting a special paint scheme based on Gravedigger at that year's Ally 400 at Nashville Super Speedway to a third place finish. Unfortunately, the paint scheme was only ran once. Overboard Name Origin Officially, the name behind Overboard is actually because the paint scheme was considered to be a little overboard, and also its engine was bored out similar to engines that you'd see on boats. Whatever that meant. Gravedigger the Legend Return? Gravedigger the Legend was a truck that ran from 2011 until 2015. The truck was based on the original blue and silver Gravedigger paint scheme from the mid-1980s. The truck is technically not retired, but Feld has said that the truck has been shelved. Since then, fans have speculated whether or not the Gravedigger the Legend truck will eventually return, despite the fact that it is very unlikely. World Final Zero. In 1999, the final championship of the 1999 Monster Jam season concluded in St. Louis, Missouri. However, the event would later be dubbed World Final Zero, unlike the six championships before then. Barefoot won racing and would be a de facto racing champion. Dennis Anderson would win the points championship. King Sling. Speaking of Dennis Anderson, his mud truck, King Sling, makes it to the tip of the iceberg here. He built this truck in 2011, although it's been planned much sooner than that. I also forgot to mention that in 2021, Weston Anderson was set a world record for jumping really high and long in this truck. Dennis would eventually be forced to shelve the truck after Feld threatened to release him from his contract. But since his retirement in 2017, I think you know where he went. Skatazoid. This entry refers to Skatazoid, arguably the rarest Monster Jam diecast to be released to the public, that is. It was released in 2009. This truck was a West 49 exclusive, and the store itself is exclusive to Canada. For a purchase of $20 or more, you got a free Skatazoid truck. The truck came in three colors, blue, green, and yellow. Unfortunately, it was only one per person for these trucks, so it was very difficult to get all three of them, unless you and two friends get them without the cashier finding out. But I doubt nobody did that. These trucks are not only Canadian exclusive, but they're also West 49 exclusive. So these trucks carry a massive burden in their rarity. Video game mods. This entry refers to two games in particular, Rigs of Rods and Beam and G Drive, both of which have active Monster Jam communities within them both. 
These games are only for those that have gotten tired with officially licensed Monster Jam games. Thunder Nationals. The Thunder Nationals was the original arena series for Monster Jam, which ran until 2014, when it was replaced by the Triple Threat series. Paul Schaefer Motorsports Buyout. On January 27, 2022, Monster Truck history was made when James Trantino III purchased the entirety of Paul Schaefer's team, which included eight trucks for an undisclosed price tag but the starting price was around $3 million. The team had been up for sale since 2004, and Schaefer hadn't competed since 2013. Since the buyout, Trantini has continued to grow and expand his monster truck empire, which now includes USA One, which he had purchased a year earlier, three trucks from Zane Ratu's team, those being Barely Tame, Master of Disaster, and Pretty Wicked, just the chassis, and two trucks from Raising Cane Racing, Exterminator and Wolf's Head, which are now called Boss Gator and Lone Wolf, since they were sponsored trucks. Obviously, with the purchase this big and recent, it's unclear where James will go from here. So who knows? Maybe he could try setting his eyes on Team Scream. Obviously, that's a joke, but you never know with Trantina. Monster Jam Bigfoot Split. I find it strange how one of the biggest monster trucks of all time, Bigfoot, has been noticeably absent from Monster Jam. But why is this? Well, when you peel back the onion, it really goes to show the utter neglect Monster Jam has and always will have for independence, even before Feld. In 1998, the USHRA attempted negotiations to purchase the Bigfoot team, similar to what they would do with Gravedigger. No surprise, or a surprise to literally nobody, Bob Chandler refused. Bigfoot's last USHRA-sanctioned event was in 2003 to celebrate the 100th anniversary of Ford, Bigfoot's manufacturer. I knew a guy whose son told Bob Chandler that, quote, I just want to see Bigfoot and Gravedigger race just once, to which Bob replied with, that ain't gonna happen. Immediately afterwards, a mechanic yelled out, F Monster Jam! Although Chandler is less bitter about the whole situation, he has managed to stick with his word. Despite that, up until 2011, Gravedigger and Bigfoot have competed in the same events, but all that changed when Feld came along in 2008, in which they put their foot down forcing Monster Jam-owned trucks to run in Monster Jam exclusively. This story was really the beginning of what I like to personally call the independent exodus. Maximum Destruction Delay This entry could go either way, but some say that it was delayed because of 9-11, while others say it wasn't. But here's the whole gist of the story. In 2001, after Goldberg terminated his contract with Monster Jam, Tom Mentz would buy out Bill Goldberg's old team. He had plotted to drive maximum destruction in 2002, however he decided to hold off on it following 9-11. It wouldn't help that the truck was called Maximum Destruction. So therefore Tom decided to rebrand the old Goldberg truck to plaster his name and face on it and rename it to Team Mentz. Totally not douchey, but then again Tom isn't the first guy to plaster his name on literally any and everything. Monster 4x4 Masters of Metal. Monsters 4x4 Masters of Metal is a video game that was released in the mid-2000s. Although it doesn't say it on the cover, it does have official Monster Jam license. The game also features some Monster Jam licensed trucks such as Gravedigger, Maximum Destruction, Blue Thunder, Gunslinger, King Crunch, and many others, just to name a few. Early Bakugan Dragonoid Concepts. This entry refers to the numerous concepts made for the Bakugan Dragonoid monster truck before they eventually settled on a final design. Orange TMNT. If you remember the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle truck, the truck would always run a red bandana, which is Raphael's bandana color. However, in 2006, on very few occasions, they ran one with the orange bandana, which is Michelangelo's color. However, the blue and purple ones were never made, as those were just renders, but they did make those into Hot Wheels diecast. Employee Toy Fair Exclusive. In late 2018, a rare Gravedigger with white tires was released exclusively for Spin Master employees. They only produced 1,000 of them. In 2020, employees got a Bakugan Dragonoid. In 2021, Toy Fair continued the tradition with a Gravedigger ride truck that same year, and a red pickup truck Gravedigger in 2022. This caused a controversy as these trucks quickly became eBay scalpers' dream. You can buy the trucks off eBay, but be prepared to file bankruptcy in the process. Spider-Man returned in 2018? In 2018, a picture of a Spider-Man body on a chassis nexus and BKT tires in a workshop appeared. Many suggested that Spider-Man, along with other Marvel trucks, could be returning. Maybe all of them. However, this was eventually disproven. Well, speak of the devil. Thanks to my constant procrastination, I can now say that Spider-Man is coming back next year.
Maybe procrastinating isn't too bad after all. Air Force Afterburner Lost Clip from Urban Assault In Monster Jam Urban Assault, Air Force Afterburner appears in one of the showroom movies you unlock in the game. However, if you watch the video full way through, he is nowhere to be seen. He has been cut for unknown reasons. The most accepted reason was because it was featured in the Orlando 2007 rollover that saw the truck burst into flames. The good news is, is that Damon Bradshaw was uninjured. Fortunately, a video has been made that was able to recreate what the missing video may have looked like. Link in the description. Grave Digger 13. In 1999, after Grave Digger number 12 was built, Dennis Anderson decided to build Grave Digger number 14? Yep, that was not a typo. Dennis decided to skip number 13 because of the whole relevance behind the unlucky number 13. Bigfoot did the exact same thing. However, Grave Digger number 7 was nicknamed Grave Digger number 13 because of the truck's constant mechanical issues following its reconstruction. Monster Jam Slime Arena. Monster Jam Slime Arena was one of the first Monster Jam playsets released by Mattel. It was released in 2001 and it lasted all the way up until 2004. The objective of the set is to basically, it's essentially a racing game where you put two trucks next to each other and they would face head to head and whoever lost would get slimed on. Ooh. Pastrana 199 Hood Flip. In 2009, in its final year running, Pastrana 199 would occasionally run a unique hood that saw the logo and motorcycle flip sides with the logo on the right side and the motorcycle on the left side. Normally, it was the other way around. Black Stallion at World Finals 1. The inaugural World Finals was meant to include Black Stallion and Michael Vodders. However, Vodders was scheduled to compete in Richmond that same weekend. This is why Mosh Jam doesn't hold events on the same day as the World Finals anymore. Cancelled broadcasts. There have been many Monster Jam events that were planned to be broadcast on speed, but were cancelled for unknown reasons. I'll touch more on this topic much later in this iceberg. Son of a Digger Mud Truck. Son of a Digger was based on Ryan Anderson's personal mud bogging truck, which that was based on his grandfather's truck. 30 Second Rule. Not only was World Finals 5 notable for having a three-way tie in freestyle, but this event also had a 30 Second Rule, which was originally exclusive to this event. The rule was pretty straightforward. Should you flip your truck within the first 30 seconds of the run and the truck isn't too damaged, you have the option to try again at the cost of one point per judge to your final score. Three trucks would use it to their advantage. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, Suzuki, and Power Forward. However, there was one truck, Blue Thunder, who broke a four-link bar in the process of flipping off, thus being unable to continue. Following the controversial 2019 All-Star when Monster Mutt Dalmatian nearly won freestyle despite doing only one jump, the rule was dusted off and was slightly tweaked. This time, if you break or flip your truck in the first 30 seconds of your run, your run will not be scored, forcing drivers to be a bit more conservative at the start of their freestyles. Personally, I'm all for this rule because a mediocre run shouldn't win because of just one move. Hint, hint, World Finals 18. The True Life of Tom Mentz. This was a documentary released in 2005 on DVD going over Tom Mentz's life up to that point and his personal struggle that would eventually pay off as he would become debatably the greatest human being to ever take control of a 15,000 pound metal machine. The DVD covers Tom's life both inside and outside of the sport and it really gets interesting. Medusa got a similar documentary but no one cares. In 2014 the documentary was uploaded to YouTube by user JoeRut00000. Monster Jam Live 2010. On January 9th, 2010, Monster Jam held its first and only live broadcast of a Monster Jam event in Atlanta's Georgia Dome to kick off the new season, despite the fact that the 2010 season started a month prior in Minneapolis. Anyway, both racing and freestyle were won by Tom Mentz and Maximum Destruction. Big surprise. And I vividly remember watching this three-hour broadcast, and let me tell you, it was quite special. Unfortunately, it has not since appeared on the membership. However, the good news is that some clips do resurface from time to time. However, it is pretty rare. Defective Goldbergs. This entry refers to how all the diecast Goldbergs had very defective plastic in their bearings. This was because of the sparkly gold rims resulting in weaker plastic, as the other three trucks released that year had gray rims. If you were to apply just a little bit of pressure onto the wheels, they would most likely break off. So don't put it in your sign-up series, for goodness sakes. 
Mad Scientist 2020 Leo Donnell. This entry is just an obscure reference made by Stephen Colbert as he joked shortly after Mad Scientist performed his first front flip. Beware of the Junkyard Dog. Beware of the Junkyard Dog was a planned truck for the 2004 season, however it was scrapped for unknown reasons, and became Radical Rescue instead. In 2016, this concept would be used to create Monster Mutt Junkyard Dog. Lost World Finals 1 Freestyles. We are now taking a deep dive into Monster Jam Lost Media. The Lost Media topic is so interesting and deep that it deserves an iceberg of its own. The World Finals was on pay-per-view for the first three runnings. However, unlike World Finals 2 and 3, World Finals 1 was shown the day after the event. As a result, there were three freestyles that were cut from the pay-per-view and the DVD release. These trucks were Prowler, Reptoid, and WCW Nitro Machine. All three of these runs were less than 10 seconds long, so therefore they were cut. Prowler, as you see right here, appears to have been stuck. However, some footage has been recovered from this, and I'm going to show that to you right now. So as you can see right there, it appears as though he could have potentially gotten stuck. Prowler scored a 19 and for, for his only World Finals appearance. The second cut freestyle, as you can even call it that, is from Jim Jack and Reptoid, who is making his only World Finals appearance. But unlike the other two, Reptoid's freestyle was shown in its entirety, although sped up during the pre-show at World Finals 2, which is what you're seeing right now. He was awarded four points for all his trouble, despite the fact that he did not even hit a single obstacle. The final of these three runs was from WCW Nitro Machine. Unlike Prowler and Reptoid, Nitro Machine has no video of it whatsoever. However, since my original iceberg, two photos of his freestyle have since resurfaced, giving us an idea of what once was. Brutus Origin. Before becoming the wild dog of Team Scream, Brutus was actually based on the character Brutus from the William Shakespeare novel Julius Caesar. As you can see right there on the hood, the Roman character Brutus, which is the namesake for the truck. Crash and Smash. Crash and Smash is probably the most forgotten about series from Hot Wheels Monster Jam as it ran for only two years from 2003 until 2004. But they're pretty cool, especially considering the weird scenarios these trucks must have gone through. Bounty Hunter World Final 16 Theme Glitch. During Bounty Hunter's Freestyle World Final 16, Down With The Sickness by Disturbed started playing. However, this was not his normal theme. His normal theme was Cowboys From Hell by Pantera. Basically, while Down With The Sickness was playing, Cowboys of Hell started kicking in, so therefore they kind of mixed in with each other, and it sounded absolutely awful. Beefy. Beefy was a truck that briefly ran only once in Brussels in 2008. I don't even want to comment what that beefy guy looks like. Superman in 2017. A year before there were rumors that Spider-Man would return to Monster Jam, Superman made a one-off appearance in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia in 2017. The reasons why he was brought into the field will be discussed later, so stay tuned. Escalade logo in Monster Jam the Video Game. In the files of Monster Jam the Video Game, a Cadillac logo can be found. This could possibly mean that an Escalade was planned to be in the game, but was scrapped early on seeing how there's no render for the truck. Mark 42 Iron Man Paint Scheme To promote the upcoming Iron Man 3, Iron Man was given a special paint scheme during the 2013 Path of Destruction tour to resemble the Mark 42 Iron Man. Not gonna lie, I wish they kept it. Tom Menson... Gravedigger? No, this is not Photoshop. Tom Mentz drove Gravedigger on two occasions, 1999 and 2001, both in Englishtown, New Jersey. Exterminator 164 in 2015, Hot Wheels was meant to release Exterminator, however, it never came out, at least in the US. The truck was eventually released exclusively in Canada. Since then, the truck normally commands outrageous prices on eBay, including the 124 scale, which was released in the US. Luckily, I snagged one back in 2018. TMNT and Suzuki cut freestyles. As I mentioned in the previous layer, World Finals 5 had a 30 second rule, but the three trucks that used it would flip over pretty quickly thereafter. While Power Forward's freestyle was shown in full, Suzuki and TMNT weren't so fortunate. The camera cut after Turtle flipped for the first time, but the run continued. Only four seconds of his continued run has resurfaced. As for Suzuki, you're not missing much. After the camera faded to black, Kathy Winston would hit the van stack one more time before parking it because she lost power steering. The only evidence of Suzuki's extended run is this photo that you see currently. 
Broker Freestyle in Pontiac 2006. At the final event in Pontiac in 2006, the broker was part of the field. However, his freestyle was not shown, possibly because of how bad he did, as he only scored a 12 out of possible 30. He wasn't even mentioned in the final results screen. This freestyle has, has since been recovered by Toon Raider. There was another cut freestyle this event. However, this was for good reason, and that was Stone Crusher. Driver Gary Wiggins would do enormous sky wheelie, however, land on the back end so hard that he broke his back and required medical assistance. But the good news is he just survived. The crash wasn't televised. However, it was shown in the membership remaster of the event. Even then, Stone Crushers can be viewed on YouTube. Stone Crusher? More like Bone Crusher, am I right? Oh, brother, this guy stinks! He-Man, He-Man, Masters of the Universe, or just He-Man, was a planned truck for the 2003 season. However, it wasn't never made, possibly due to the copyright reasons. Mattel did make a diecast version of it in 2003. Captain's Curse Crash was shown in the European broadcast. No, I am not talking about the myriad of videos on YouTube of Captain Curse's Crash from the World Finals 10. They actually showed it on broadcast, but only in Europe with Scott Douglas's commentary. They are dead even. Blackswell is going for it and over he goes. Look out. Captain's Curse goes into the safety hold area. Those seats obviously held just for that purpose. Holiday Hauler Prototype. During the 2011 holiday season, Target had a line of mystery trucks where you wouldn't know which truck you'd get until you bought it and opened the box. One of these trucks was an exclusive called Holiday Hauler. Although it's not set on the truck, but in the original prototype, it was planned to include a Christmas tree in the back. The only, th the only known owners of this truck are Brian C. Patton and Monster Jam OCD. However, these are just prototypes, so don't expect to see a tree on the back of the truck if you buy this off of eBay. Alien Invasion Fire. As you can see in this very blurry picture here, Alien Invasion was originally planned to be in the Fire series, but was changed to the Ice series instead. This is the only Fire Ice truck to be changed. Spitfire Monster Truck Lawsuit. World Finals 9 concluded with the debut of two new trucks, Backwards Bob and Spitfire? Yep, Spitfire was meant to be a real truck with Paul Cohn as its flagship driver, like how Mike Wine was with Backwards Bob. However, an unknown third party sued Monster Jam for copyright infringement regarding the Spitfire name. Monster Jam then tried to copyright the name Spitfire Monster Truck, as seen in Monster Jam Urban Assault. However, the truck was eventually renamed to Dragon's Breath and re-debuted in 2011. This lawsuit was the reason why the encore was cut from all forms of official media, but luckily dedicated fans such as myself took it upon ourselves to reconstruct the encore. Zombie Encores Arguably the worst World Finals concluded with probably the worst encore in Monster Jam history, but it did show off in very big quotation marks. Multiple different types of zombies, however you couldn't tell because it was almost impossible to see. Thanks, Feld. These trucks were meant to be driven in 2016 as their own separate trucks, similar to the El Toro Locos. But unfortunately, these trucks were scrapped, except for the ugliest one, of course, they did. The other zombies included a red burnt zombie, a little gory when you think about it, but it was meant to be a Kale of Blood zombie. The most mysterious one here is the green biker slash redneck zombie. No actual good photos of it exist. However, you can see in the render that it's probably the goriest and most gruesome one you would ever see of the four here. And last but not least is the skeleton zombie, which did drive very, very, very briefly by Barry Musauer until he destroyed the body and it was never repaired. Even though these trucks were never rebuilt, it's nice to see them getting a lot of love from Spin Master. Grave Digger 2 Restoration. In 2016, Adam Anderson decided to restore the second ever Grave Digger using modern parts. I kind of just threw this in because no one really knew that. Everyone knows about the first Grave Digger Restoration just recently, but not any of the others, so therefore some trucks are sadly rotting away somewhere. Jurassic Attack Blackout. In 2016, Hot Wheels released the only Blackout, which was Monster Mutt Dalmatian with the very ugly tooling. However, there was meant to be another Blackout truck, and that was Jurassic Attack. Unfortunately, it was canceled for unknown reasons. This was the only Blackout to ever be canceled, as far as we know. 
Grave Digger 25 and a half. In 2012, Monster Jam went to Lexington. However, no Grave Digger was available, so therefore Paul Cohen substituted with a Feld chassis, which was black instead of the traditional green. I wish. This entry refers to a joke by Jim Kohler during the 2015 World Finals where he wrote the words I wish next to a BKT sticker on his chassis. The reason he wrote it is because the truck was not run on BKT tires, but rather a set of his own tires. This is before BKT tires were mandatory in Monster Jam. Kid Rock. Around the 2000s, Kid Rock approached Clear Channel Entertainment to possibly make a monster truck in his name. Here's the tagline from the 2003 Chuck World Archives. Last fall, Kid Rock's album, Cocky, hit the charts. A song entitled Forever from the album featured a video which had Rock perched atop a Stars and Stripes painted barefoot monster truck, aptly named American Badass, for the video. Well, look out, Carl Malone and Medusa. Kid Rock's back and he's working on a deal with Clear Channel Entertainment Motorsports to create a monster truck themed after himself. The name and image is yet to be decided, but knowing the kid from Detroit, we're betting it's going to be a Ford. Although the deal fell through, Kid Rock would eventually get his wish with Paul Schaefer Motorsports. Sheer Insanity Fire In early 2017, Sheer Insanity's chassis was burnt alongside with TNT's chassis. The truck was retired until just this year when it's expected to return on a very cursed chassis that we'll discuss later. Two Extreme Racing 1 This was Jimmy Creedon's old YouTube channel. It's been abandoned since 2012. Major League of Monster Trucks. This short-lived independent sanctioning monster truck series saw various independent teams, ranging from Team Scream, Two Extreme, Bigfoot, Frankish, Schaefer, and Hall, just to name a few. The Major League of Monster Trucks, or MLMT for short, lasted only two years, but this failure led to the executive vice president, Deborah Maselli, competing in Monster Jam the next year. You may not recognize her by her name, but you certainly know her by her nickname, Medusa. Saudi Arabia 2017 Censorship This event was the reason why Superman made the one-off appearance in 2017, as mentioned earlier. Monster Jam's first ever appearance in Saudi Arabia saw a lot of changes. Most of these were minor changes, like theme songs being instrumentals, driver changes, and different paint schemes, such as the Black El Toro Loco, Purple Mohawk Warrior, and the Red Max D, which is a little strange because Gravedigger was not in this event because it couldn't compete because of religious reasons. But they also let a truck called Maximum Destruction compete. Ironic. Dalmatian and Dragon remained unchanged, but some changes were made to two of the trucks in particular that we never see again. These included Team Hot Wheels without the skull, which is hard to see. But the most notable change came with Blue Thunder, as they removed the lightning from Blue Thunder. So it's just blue. Even though Thunder is not lightning, and also Thunder is just the delayed sound of lightning, which makes sense because the speed of light is faster than the speed of sound. Okay, we're getting off topic. Moving on. Morgan Colton Switch. This entry refers to the driver switch between Morgan Kane and Colton Eichelberger in 2016. Cardiff 2010. This event featured the stupidest reason why a truck couldn't freestyle. Podzilla wasn't allowed to freestyle because the seat was too short. Seriously, you can't make that shit up. Gore trucks. This is just fan-made trucks. Pretty cool, though. The Mailman. This was the original name for Power Forward. Enough said. Savannah 2006. This was an independent show where a truck named Jailbreak was racing. When it landed, a pipe exploded underneath the concrete floor. It took around 45 minutes to fix. Jack Wilman Jr.'s stash. In very high quotations. Jack Wilman Jr. was the son of Jack Wilman Sr., creator of Taurus, and the cousin of Team Mensa's other driver, Elton DePew. However, he is also known for his various run-ins with law enforcement. The first time was for stealing equipment. The other time, however, was for attempting to smuggle drugs into the United States following a tour in South America by attempting to put them into the tires. He has also been known for missing shows altogether and frequently subbed by his father and or his cousin. Luckily, this didn't stop his father from being one of the inaugural inductees into the International Monster Truck Hall of Fame. World Finals Playset Trucks. This refers to two trucks released in playsets that say World Finals on it, even though they are not related to the commemorative trucks since they could be related to any World Finals. Steel Thunder. In Monster Jam Maximum Destruction, the trucks are listed in alphabetical order except for one, Blue Thunder, which is placed strangely in between Sting and Spider-Man. 
Another thing worth mentioning are the champion trucks, which are basically the same trucks but with a yellow roll cage. The way you unlock them is by winning a championship with the truck, you don't say. Blue Thunder's championship truck, however, is named Steel Thunder on the PC version of the game. But Blue Thunder being out of order in the lineup persists in all versions of the game. Monster Magic. In late 2011, Mopar Magic was rebanded to Monster Magic after Steve Sims' contract license with Dodge expired. The alternatively named truck would run for only six months. However, it won at Minneapolis with future Grave Digger driver Morgan Kane defeating Son of a Digger in its competition debut. Tom Mentz in the Marines. Pretty self-explanatory, except without much evidence. Home Depot Racing. This is a bizarre monster truck that originated in Florida. The truck speaks for itself. I got hunted by the military. This refers to a Mr. Beast video of the same name. In it, Wasted Nights makes a cameo appearance. Super bonus time. On very rare occasions, if a truck finished bonus time, they would enter super bonus time. It didn't mean anything, but hey, it has super in the name, so it must be good. This was exclusive to the 2008 season. First backflip? The first monster truck backflip is hotly debated. The oldest recorded attempt dates back to 2003. Simply put, it wasn't even close. Four years later, Tom Mentz was freestyling at Gothenburg. He did a jump and fell backwards on the nose and landed on all four wheels. Whether that count as a backflip varies on depending on who you ask. This freestyle would inspire Travis Pastrana to attempt a backflip in his own monster truck on his TV show Nitro Circus of the same name. The truck shot straight up, resulting in a very violent crash. In early 2009, Tom Mentz successfully performed a backflip in the months leading up to that year's World Finals. At the end of that freestyle, a car stack was removed from the center jump, and Mentz would get one shot to shock the world. He got one full rotation, however, he would over-rotate it and land on his roof. A little over a month later, Ghost Rider, owned by and driven by Larry Quick, successfully executed the first ever backflip in a public event in Bradford, Vermont. One year later, Cam McQueen would accidentally land the first modern backflip in Monster Jam scored competition, driving, ironically enough, Nitro Circus. Every Monster Jam show is recorded. I seriously doubted the suggestion, but Monster Jam fan was able to back it up with the fact that many clips in the Crash Madness DVDs featured clips of shows that were not even shown in any other form of media. So it makes you wonder, does every Monster Jam show still exist? The world may never know. Shock Therapy New Tool. In 2013, the Amsoil Shock Therapy became the first ever truck to be used for the new tool for Hot Wheels Monster Jam. It was only released in a playset. CCE theme songs. As I mentioned in my Team Mentz video, CCE, also known as Clear Channel Entertainment, were the owners of Monster Jam in the early to mid 2000s. During that time, they made custom theme songs for certain trucks, including Team Mentz, Gunslinger, and Power Forward. And that's even more that we might not know about. There was one plan for Gravedigger, but it was never used. Blue Thunder is rumored to have had a custom theme, but that's debated. Search efforts for these themes didn't materialize until 2017, and since then, a lot of progress has been made. Monster Jam MasterCard. In the late 90s and early 2000s, there were custom concepts for credit cards with Monster Jam trucks, including Gravedigger and Nitro Machine. There's nothing specific about this, I just thought it was really cool. Gravedigger website. Stick it to the theme of Gravedigger. In the early 2010s, there was originally a Gravedigger website where you could just buy stuff. And it's basically like most other monster truck websites like Team Screams where you can just buy merchandise and miscellaneous stuff. The website is now defunct, but you can still somehow find the link. You can put it through the Wayback Machine and relive the nostalgia from the early 2010s. Firemouth was meant to drive past 2002. In case you don't remember, Firemouth was a very short-lived truck in Monster Jam, running in just the 2002 season. But Firemouth, if you don't know, was actually a licensed truck. If you don't know what Firemouth is, it's a brand of fish bait. The truck was meant to drive past 2002. Unfortunately, I assume that the contract expired, so I guess, therefore, the Firemouth became the most obscure felled truck of all time. In 2003, the chassis was reused for the first Monster Mutt. Bret Hart. In 2000, when they started making WCW trucks, there was Goldberg, Sting, Medusa, NWO, and WCW Nitro Machine. However, there was meant to be a sixth truck to the fleet in the form of Hitman Bret Hart, based on the real-life wrestler, as was all of these. However, this was never made and was eventually used as a second Sting truck. 
Avenger jet ski. At World Funnels 10, an Avenger boat or a jet ski could be seen in the fountain as you can see King Crunch jumping over it, but I don't think anyone destroyed it. The only reason it's this low in the iceberg is just because of how obscure that this thing has become. 2000 Slinger. In 2000, Hot Wheels decided for their Rev and Ghost series, instead of Gunslinger, Hot Wheels decided to put just Slinger. However, this proved to be prophetic, as in 2017, the truck was unfortunately renamed a Slinger. I think you know how I feel about that by now. I bought one back in 2018 solely because Hot Wheels can predict the future. Gravedigger Roller Coaster. In late 2018, Cedar Point announced there'd be a Gravedigger themed roller coaster. However, I don't even know if this went past the concept as you can see right here. I mean, look at this thing. Despite that, there is a Monster Jam themed section at Cedar Point. DK Barrel. This entry is referring to Donkey Kong's debut at Minneapolis in 2007. A barrel was built around the monster truck before the gates opened to the public. Up until driver introductions when the truck would just break through it from the inside. Kind of defeating the purpose of the building it, but that's just me. Iron Man did a similar thing in Costa Rica in 2011, but with a McDonald's box instead for some reason. Lucas Oil Crusader Unreleased Theme. If you didn't know, Lucas Oil Crusader had a custom theme song made for it by Divinity. However, there's a slightly different version of that song that was played at only at shows live. There's a small hunt to recreate the alternative theme. Coastal Construction Lap Glitch. In Monster Jam Urban Assault, a huge skip can be performed in Coastal Construction, skipping almost the entire lap. The reason this glitch works is because of a programming technique nicknamed the 95% rule, similar to what you'd see in Mario Kart Wii. To put it simply, the game requires you to complete at least 95% of the lap in order for it to count. However, you can complete a lap by completing the last key checkpoint without completing the first, otherwise it won't work. The glitch involves bypassing an out-of-bounds plane at the start by jumping at a very precise angle, landing you at the finish line. From here, go backwards until you hit the tunnel exit, or in this case, the tunnel entrance. Turn back around and congratulations, you've officially tricked the game into thinking that you completed the whole lap, although it has a 50-50% chance of working. If it doesn't work, good luck trying to not finish dead last. The glitch was believed to have been known as early as 2015. Similar glitches were discovered on Downtown Demolition and Brooklyn Nights, which follow a similar setup. Plushies slash puppets and trucks. This refers to the numerous instances of plushies and puppets appearing on it or in monster trucks. The most notable of these occurrences goes to none other than the Pizza Man himself, Avengers Racing, with his Kermit the Frog puppet he brings to monster truck shows. And he manages to convince drivers to have Kermit ride along for the ride. Yeah, Monster Jam Lottery Tickets In 2001, the Minnesota State Lottery decided to make some lottery tickets with monster trucks on them. There are five variations. American Guardian, Bulldozer, Gravedigger, King Crunch, and Prowler. World Finals 9 Commemorative Truck In 2008, Monster Jam made its first ever commemorative truck in air quotes because it was a plus truck. It was never made in a Hot Wheels Monster Jam. I guess this could also coincide as... World Finals 1 through 9 because it doesn't specify which World Finals. East Rutherford World Finals concept. When the World Finals was originally going to be a rotational event, the first venue planned was MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford. As you can see here in this concept art, it shows a lot of similarities between the World Finals 18 track design, probably because that was the most recent World Finals up to that point. However, in late 2018, they decided that they were going to instead go to Orlando. I guess that now they could go there since they ditched the Vegas-style layout in 2022 because of Camping World Stadium's recent renovations. The Left Lane Curse. This entry refers to the fact that 8 of the 20 World Finals Championship races in the Vegas-style racing layout have been won from the left lane. Most drivers that were given the left lane would either violently crash, be cursed with something, or just straight up lose. The most notable of these crashes was in 2009 when Alex Blackwell infamously lost his brakes and then crashed into the stands. He chose to turn, then flip, rather than running directly head on into the wall. The curse wouldn't bite again until 2014 when Tom Mentz, who undeservingly won a runoff against Leo Dunn on the semifinals, as he essentially launched over the freestyle obstacle, creating a huge wreck. The last time the curse struck was in 2015. Son of a Digger spun out and did a sidewall and eventually saved it, but by then, Tal Duke had already won the race. 
The curse wasn't exclusive to the championship race either. Other crashes included Blacksmith flipping to the dumpster in 2001 and Titan's practice crash in 2014 where he rammed head on into the wall. 2000 All Star Challenge. Uh, 2020 All Star Challenge. In 2020, the All-Star Challenge was meant to be Zombie vs. Hunter, similar to the 2019 All-Star being the Fire and Ice theme. However, unfortunately, it didn't get past the drawing board because the world was being dominated by a different kind of disease. Lost World Finals 3 Encore The third World Finals concluded with a five-truck freestyle involving Blacksmith, Bulldozer, Team Mentz, Wolverine, and 20th Anniversary Gravedigger. The Encore was believed to have only lasted a minute. Only about five seconds of footage and several photos have been found of this encore, making this Monster Jam's only lost encore, not counting the World Finals 8 halftime encore. Unlockable trucks and Monster Jam Maximum Destruction. Monster Jam Maximum Destruction included many unlockable trucks. The way to unlock them is to complete a season with a championship truck, and the way to unlock those trucks is to complete a season with any truck, so basically you're beating two seasons with the same truck. These unlockable trucks included 20th Anniversary Gravedigger, Armed Force, Big Yellow, Bulldog, Dog Pound, Hooch Wagon, Inland Productions, The Original Gravedigger, Paddy Wagon, Rayman, and The Cancelled Incredible Hulk. There were also PC exclusive trucks. These were Chessmaster 9000, High Voltage Software, Stupid Invaders, Tonic Trouble, and Ubisoft. There was also High Roller, which was exclusive to the Game Boy Advance version of the game. Not to mention there were two trucks that were cancelled. Wrenchhead.com and Nitro Machine. Both of these were cut because of their contracts expiring in 2001. Little Tiger World Funnels 5 Hood. At World Funnels 5, Brian Bartle decided to put the 2003 Racing Champion decal on the hood of the truck, of his Little Tiger Monster Truck. However, there's almost no pictures of the hood. Luckily, Monster Jam OCD did a pretty good job recreating it for his custom. Unfortunately, Little Tiger was never made in Hot Wheels, Monster Jam, nor Spin Master Monster Jam, so that's why it's low on the iceberg. Diesel Brothers Lawsuit At one point in 2018 or 2019, the Diesel Bros were sued by the people that own Extreme Diesel for claiming that Brodozer was the first diesel-powered truck, which is not the case because Extreme Diesel debuted in 2009. Ironically enough, they both shared the same color pattern, black and yellow. WWE Prototypes In 2007, WWE trucks were made by Hot Wheels to promote WrestleMania 23. There were three two-packs released. These included Batista vs. John Cena, The Rock vs. Stone Cold, and Undertaker, which was only released in Europe, and Triple H, which was only released in America, the, both of them are inverted, versus Rey Mysterio. There were many other planned trucks, including the brothers Matt and Jeff Hardy, Edge, Hulk Hogan, and Roddy Piper, which was made in 124, but not in 164. World Finals 11 Gravedigger Encore. At the World Finals 11 Encore, Dennis Adam and Ryan Anderson in the black, blue, and red Gravediggers, respectively, went out and freestyled, which concluded with probably one of the craziest endings to a World Finals in Monster Jam history, with Dennis and Ryan colliding in mid-air that led to Gravedigger 14's retirement. However, Dennis Anderson originally planned for all three to collide in mid-air, but unfortunately Adam flipped early in the Encore, so this would forever be a what-could-have-been. Farewell Pink Medusa 164. In 2016, Hot Wheels made a very small number of Medusas with the Farewell Tour decal on the roof, which did exist in real life, albeit much smaller. However, it was not mass-produced following Medusa's release from her contract a year before her Farewell Tour in 2017. Because of that, the pink variant of the Farewell Tour Medusa has become arguably the rarest monster truck diecast in history. Doomsday 2019 Concept In 2019, concept art for possible Doomsday Revival was leaked to the public. The truck looks far different than the one that ran in real life just a few years earlier. The rumor of Doomsday's return is fueled by the fact that it was designed by Nicholas Narsowski I butchered that really badly, I'm sorry, who also made concept for an NEI revival along with many other trucks. So maybe Feld planned to come back for NEA in Doomsday? The world may never know. Dairy Queen Tampa. For some reason, the Monster Jam website has a page where they list the addresses for all the Dairy Queens located in Tampa.
weird. Monsters on Main Street. Monsters on Main Street was a sweepstakes type event that occurred between 2006 to 2009. You could enter to have a chance of winning a Monster Jam sanctioned event near or in your hometown. In 2009, the contest was changed and the winner got a 2010 Ford F-150 Raptor instead. In 2010, the event was advertised but was scrapped altogether. Captain's Curse 124 Render is Barefoot. I found this fact on Reddit, but it found it very strange, so here it is. When Captain's Curse was first released in the old 124 scale style, the truck was rendered on barefoot. Probably because the truck hadn't even come out yet when they made the die cast. Dustin Brown did drugs. I once heard a rumor that Dustin Brown was fired by Feld for potentially doing drugs. However, there's absolutely no evidence to back this up, especially since he's been let back into Monster Jam, but not as a driver. Grim Max D trailers underscore low. This entry refers to a trailer uploaded in June 2021 by user Skyliner849. This video is very low quality but shows Grim and Maximus duking it out anime style. No other context behind this video, but what could have been used, and it could be related to another entry later on in this iceberg. World Final 17 breaking line. During practice for World Final 17 on Friday, Cam McQueen lost control of his truck, and then after he got up the ramp, a braking line broke off and flew into the crowd. Luckily, it didn't hit anyone. However, this is not the first or the last time that a piece of a truck broke off and flew into the crowd. El Paso 2020 Security Threat at El Paso in 2020, the event was delayed for three hours due to a potential bomb threat, or maybe a potential shooter. However, this was eventually debunked, and the show went on regardless. Great Bite Prototype In the prototype for Great Bite, the truck was originally planned to be white, before they changed it to a dark blue and silver gradient to match a real-life shark. Spelling Mistake in Fan Favorites During TMNT's introduction in the Fan Favorites DVD, Raphael's name is misspelled. You had one job, dude. Shake Me. Shake Me was a mud bogging truck first driven by Tom Mentz in the 1990s. Anti Feld graffiti at World Finals 18. At the time of World Finals 18, anti Feldism, if that's even a term, was arguably at an all time high. Fans weren't afraid to vent their frustrations at the graffiti zone and the pit party, such as Feld Sucks and Feld Ruined Monster Jam, which was the nicest things they wrote, trust me. Monster Jam, as big as it gets. This was Monster Jam's first ever attempt at milking the mobile game Cash Cow. However, the game was poorly received for being very glitchy and terribly designed. The game was removed from the App Store a year later. The only way to play this game now is if you download it before its removal. Severed American Guardian. When American Guardian was made into diecast form in 2002, Mattel made a huge error on the tailgate which read, Dedicated to the men and women who severed in the armed forces. In case you didn't know, severed means loss of limb. Luckily, they corrected it quickly with served in the armed forces, but this was still a horrible mistake. Rip-off trucks. This refers to the many clones of famous monster trucks. Some are more blatant than others. Team T and El Toro Loco have the same jawline. I found this out on my own, but yeah, if you look closely, El Toro Loco and Team and T share similar jawlines if you look at where the mouth starts. Dennis Anderson 2017 Tampa Crash On January 14th, 2017, Dennis Anderson would compete in what would end up being his final Monster Jam event. During his freestyle, he tried to go for a backflip, however the RII malfunctioned, so therefore he landed right on the head of the truck. He had to be lifted out of the truck and he was sent to the hospital. People feared the worst. But luckily, the truck's roof, which was welded to the top of the truck, likely saved his life, especially since the roll cage was damaged in that crash. Dennis would make a full recovery, but would make the decision to retire from the World Finals only before he would ultimately retire completely from Monster Jam later that September. Luckily, he has managed to keep himself occupied with King Sling, but has only competed in a few events since that fateful Saturday in 2017. Lost European Airings Taz91, it's your time to shine, buddy, so here we go. From the mid-2000s to the early 2010s, Monster Jam was broadcast in Europe on a variety of networks. Not to mention that there were events that aired on speed, but there was also a select group of events that did not air in the U.S., which is the main topic of interest. These European exclusive airings included... Here we go. Antwerp 2004, Antwerp 2006, Arnhem 2006, 
Indianapolis 2006, Minneapolis 2006, San Antonio 2006, San Diego 2006, Anaheim 2007 Show 1, Cardiff 2007, Indianapolis 2007, Minneapolis 2007 Show 2, San Antonio 2007, San Francisco 2007, Tampa 2007, Anaheim 2008 Show 1, Indianapolis 2008, Barcelona 2009, Shore South Poland 2009, Houston 2009 Show 3, Knoxville 2009, Minneapolis 2009 Show 1, World Finals 10 featuring the Captain's Curse Crash as mentioned earlier, Phoenix 2009, San Antonio 2009, Tampa 2009, Toronto 2009, Barcelona 2011, and Madrid 2011. Whew, that's a lot of European exclusive shows. Another thing to point out is that some of these events were aired in Australia. However, Australian Monster Jam fans got robbed as they only got 30 minutes of highlights of each show. Some of them were preserved as fellow YouTuber Monster Talk revealed that he had some personally saved on DVD. Considerable efforts have been made to hunt down these events and even have its, its own dedicated Facebook group. The hunt got so big that former YouTuber PETA888, now known as Vale, who uploaded a portion of the San Antonio 2007 airing, came back from the dead to join the hunt. All this led up to July 3rd, 2022, when a massive breakthrough is made as user Liam Man claims to have had most of the airings, and as of the recording of this video, Liam is currently working on uploading these events in some form in the future. Taz91 has posted little snippets of these airings on his channel. Just recently, another YouTuber joined the mix, Square Zero, formerly known as Square One. He graced us all with the videos from his archives. Cardiff 2007, Anaheim 2008, and a special exclusive highlight reel that aired in 2010 showing three tracks, Black Stallion, El Toro Loco, and Iron Warrior, competing in events that weren't aired in any form, such as Miami 2002, which was shown in the 2004 Controlled Chaos DVD, Charlottesville 2008, Houston 2008 Show 2, Rally 2008, Cleveland 2009, El Paso 2009 The Sunday Show, and Houston 2009 Show 2. Then finally, on August 8th, 2022, a miracle. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Every European exclusive airing from 2007 to 2009, along with the events that aired on speed, were uploaded for the whole world to see. Although we are still missing the 2006 airings, the search by all accounts should end here. However, remember when I mentioned the special episode given to us by Square Zero? Not none of those events in it were aired in their entirety. This only begs the question, what events are on the other three episodes? We'll have to wait and hopefully get an answer. Since initially writing the script and recording it, more events have been rumored. Milano 2005, Paris 2006, Costa Rica 2008, and Gothenburg 2008. To add to the confusion, Crash Madness was also aired in Europe, which included some of the previously mentioned shows. No surprise, a lot of misinformation is spread about these airings. There is so much more I haven't mentioned, and I personally can't do this topic justice. If you want a comprehensive history of this topic, I recommend checking out a video by Taz91 himself. Link in the description. This topic is constantly growing, and this video is guaranteed to be outdated by the time this video is uploaded. In fact, I had to write this segment of the video three times because of how quickly this topic is evolving. World Finals 18 Website Mistake This entry refers to the erroneous claim made by Monster Jam shortly after the 2017 World Finals Racing Championship. The error states that no two Team Gravedigger drivers have ever gone head-to-head -head in the final round of racing at the Monster Jam World Finals. This is false because in 2004 it was between Dennis Anderson and Pablo Huffaker. Escalade unused logo. Originally, Escalade was meant to have a logo, but did not appear in the final truck. Personally, I think the truck looks better when it was just plain black. But anyway, here's the unused logo. As you can see right here on screen right now. Lost 2003 season. This entry refers to the fact that in 2003, Monster Jam failed to secure a TV contract as TNN was transitioning into speed. This came at the cost with there being no new episodes of Monster Jam in between 2002 and 2003 World Finals. The only other event to air that year was West Lebanon, which interestingly enough was the only time West Lebanon got a televised event. Shrek. 
Somebody once told me that in 2007, Monster Jam was going to make a Shrek truck to remote the third Shrek movie. This truck was never seen and went past the drawing board. The only evidence of this truck's existence was in the European version of the 2007 Monster Jam yearbook. There was no concept art for this, so I just have this wonderful picture of Shrek. Nice. Ben 10 Monster Truck Mania. In 2011, there was a European monster truck event called Ben 10 Monster Truck Mania, where they had a bunch of trucks based on Ben 10 characters. I personally have never seen Ben 10, but it must have been awesome. It's deep down here because of how little this event is known about. Rob Neal Tom Mentz Relations. In case you don't know who Rob Nell was, he was the original driver of Bulldozer and would eventually be known as the driver of NWO, aka the original Doomsday. He drove until 2004 when he was injured in a crash in Red Bluff. In 2006, Nell would return to make a few appearances driving Hot Wheels. The reason why he's so low on the iceberg is because he is actually a cousin of Tom Mentz. Not many people know that. Son of a Digger was hinted at in 2002. In the 20th anniversary Grave Digger DVD, Dennis Anderson made a brief mention of Son of a Digger. However, instead of being driven by Ryan Anderson, it would be driven by both Ryan and Adam, while Dennis was still driving Grave Digger. Adam's truck is going to be called Son of a Digger. And he just doesn't want me to open the door and let him jump in my truck and go, here you go, son, have at it. That one didn't age quite so well. Marvel Monster Trucks Live. In the summer of 2012, Marvel planned a monster truck event to call it Marvel Monster Trucks Live. Very creative name, I might add. This would have taken place in San Diego's Qualcomm Stadium and would have its very own storyline. Whether that was going to be akin to the MCU is up for debate. However, this never came to fruition, but Feld would reuse the idea to make Marvel Universe Live in 2014. Darth Vader. There's not much evidence to back this up, but I'll try my best here. In late 2013, Feld approached Lucasfilm to possibly make a Darth Vader-themed monster truck, but the concept was scrapped shortly thereafter. This wasn't the end of it, however, as Darth Vader would be used for the concept of Doomsday. Unknown Doomsday Drivers Doomsday was a truck that was best known for the mysterious driver that piloted the truck. As we now know, it wasn't just one driver, but a list of drivers at the events that they competed at. The only drivers we don't have official drivers for are Anaheim 2014 and Jacksonville 2014. The current rumors are Damon Bradshaw drove at Anaheim while Frank Krimmel drove at Jacksonville. However, these are not proven. Jackie Carasoza. She was meant to be the new driver of Soldier Fortune in 2019. However, her tenure at Feld lasted only three days as a pornographic video of her resurfaced on Worldstar. She would be replaced by Kayla Blood, who still drives the truck to this day. Her tenure is tied with Chad Reed for being the shortest in Monster Jam history. Ironically enough, Monster Truck Throwdown released a calendar just two weeks later, showing two women in dresses in a suggestive pose, which makes Feld's decision even more stupider. Grave Digger Wild Tracks. This refers to a canceled Grave Digger concept as a tank, similar to what Bigfoot did. The only evidence we have is of, is of a t-shirt design that was mentioned by Dennis in the 25th anniversary DVD. Kind of like this rig right here. We had this Grave Digger Wild Tracks of tanks when the tanks were big and popular. This actually is artwork for a poster. So I was going to sell merchandise. I was going to sell uh, posters and t-shirts. And I was creating this tank. Monster Jam Now. This was the official Monster Jam app released in the mid-2000s and was removed shortly thereafter. From what we know, you're not missing much. The app was basically the Monster Jam website, but bite-sized. Ooh. The app was probably the most obscure and mysterious piece of Monster Jam lost media as of the writing of this video. No screenshots have been discovered and is very unlikely to ever be found. SpongeBob. In an old Hot Wheels Monster Jam lineup list from 2002, SpongeBob appears on the list. It's unknown what it looks like. There is no concept for this truck. Obviously, it didn't exist in real life either. The listing of this truck is the only evidence of this truck's existence. However, Hot Wheels would eventually make a SpongeBob diecast in 2019. But it makes you wonder if a SpongeBob truck was ever planned to run in Monster Jam. Monster Jam the movie. I kid you not. Clear Channel conceived an idea for a Monster Jam movie that would have likely aired on ESPN. But we do have a bit of storyline here. But here's a description of the movie from the 2003 archives. Quote. 
Clear Channel Entertainment Motorsports and Tag Entertainment would have announced the creation of Monster Jam the movie. Filming is well underway and will continue throughout the summer. Scheduled to be released in the theaters of the spring of 2004. Truck World has learned of the preliminary plot for the film, which is based around a family of four that builds a monster truck. The truck they build is the Monster Mutt. When the mud is ready to roll, the son skillfully drives the truck via remote control. The daughter loves the truck and finds herself in the driver's seat just along for the ride. Competing on tracks throughout this country, the Monster Mutt becomes very popular and wins many races. Making it to the World Finals, unforeseen remote problems occur and the son can't use the controls to drive the truck. The daughter has to take charge of the situation and actually drive the truck at the event, ultimately winning the race. The film was meant to star actress Elena Austin, who starred in several TV movies such as the 2001 Disney Channel movie Motocross, as well as the Disney Channel show Inc., which absolutely nobody remembers. The film would have recycled footage from World Finals 4. Unfortunately, the movie was ultimately scrapped, possibly due to Monster Mutt's poor performance at the event as Todd Frolic was knocked out in round one and crashed early in his freestyle run and finished in the doghouse. No pun intended. To this day, this is probably the most sought-after piece of Monster Jam Lost Media, and it, the only piece of this film's existence is the production still that you see right now. If you've made it this far into the iceberg, give yourself a pat on the back and maybe subscribe while you're at it. World Finals 19 Fireworks Incident After the World Finals 19 Encore featuring Rampage, fireworks were shot out signaling the end of the Encore. However, one of them malfunctioned and fired into the crowd. Luckily, no one was severely injured and no fatalities. The Amy Hood Conspiracy If you don't remember Amy Hood, she was the driver of Zombie from 2017 to 2019 in the Triple Threat series. After a hard crash in early 2019, she was scheduled to compete in Cleveland. However, her ride would be filled in by Macy Nictor, I probably severely butchered that, who drove it for the rest of the year. But why was this? Well, it's rumored that she was arrested after attempting to smuggle a bag of flour into the facility. I'll let you use your imagination to determine what a bag of flour is in this context. However, there is no proof of her apparent arrest, and she would make a return to monster trucks driving train wreck. Ironic. This is just the tip of the iceberg, despite being at the very bottom of this iceberg. If you want a more detailed explanation, Austin Uganowski made a great video on this subject. Link in the description. Plus truck symbol. In 2016, a mother bought a custom plush truck named Team Crush for her daughter. However, she had discovered to her abject horror that this heart symbol on the roof of the truck normally wouldn't pose much of a concern considering it was a girl-themed truck. But the symbol has been known for being used for trafficking, and that felt was some sort of secret ring of... No wonder they try to cater y'all children. It's all a conspiracy! It's a conspiracy, man! Or it was just a really bad oversight on Feld's part. Or it was likely blown out of proportion, like everything is nowadays. Bigfoot 9 was stolen. The ninth Bigfoot chassis was built in 1990. The chassis was built similar to Bigfoot 8, but with slight upgrades. Chromoly steel tubing and a different welding technique, which made the truck much more prone to braking, as was normal for trucks in the era. The truck also ran under the Hollywood Hogan moniker from 1996 to 1998, before it was converted back to Bigfoot. In 1998, the truck was sent to run in an event in Brazil to promote the new Super Duty body style. There, however, the chassis was seized by a Brazilian customs group before it was set to be imported back to the U.S. It's not known what their intentions were, but the seized chassis was later sold to Extreme Motorsports, unaware of the truck's history. The truck was converted to the Flash and ran in the early to mid-2000s. The truck was sold again and became Crystal before being sold back to Extreme Motorsports, who turned it into Extreme. The chassis also ran Bigfoot paint schemes on the chassis in between all of this. To this day, the chassis is still in Brazil. Bigfoot attempted to file a dispute, but was eventually rejected. At the same time, the chassis was allegedly being held ransom for $500,000, but Bigfoot 4x4 ultimately decided that it wouldn't be worth it because they deemed it to be less valuable, as well as the problems caused by its construction mentioned earlier. Not to mention the repair costs on top of that as well. In 2017, Bigfoot founder and owner Bob Chandler was asked about the chassis. He stated, and I quote, According to Brazilian law, the truck belongs to whoever unloads it. We are advised that we could hire either an attorney or a facilitator who would hand it out bribes as such. We hired an attorney. 
That was a mistake. Dave Harkey. Dave Harkey was a Bigfoot driver as well as a relief driver for Paul Schaefer, mainly driving Monster Patrol. After his retirement in 2007, he was arrested for attempted theft at a local store. During incarceration, Harkey committed... Todd Blazer. Todd Blazer was the driver of Hot Stuff, who was in a crash in 1991. When the officials came to his rescue, he had no pulse and was pronounced dead. Until his would-be corpse was successfully resuscitated, he still lives on to this very day. Crustacean 2010 Incident In a 2010 event, Crustacean would live up to its name when it accidentally hit the announcer, Ken Dickinson, and knocking him over. He was sent to the hospital on a stretcher, but don't worry, he survived. His only injury was a broken pelvis. But while this story had a happy ending, the following ones don't, so watch at your own risk. Niagara Falls, 1992. During a race between Bad Medicine and Taurus, Bad Medicine would have a bad bounce which knocked driver Don Van Lu unconscious and cracked a bead in the right rear wheel. With the truck having a mind of its own at that point, it drove directly into the crowd and crushing Lester Gilliam, whom sacrificed himself for a, to save a little boy. This man is the ultimate proof that not all superheroes wear capes. Galesburg, 1992. Three months after Niagara Falls, a similar accident occurred when overexcited, driven by an unknown driver, was knocked unconscious and lost control. It ran over a six-year-old Todd Abbott, who has found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. Claremore, 1994. In 1994, a monster patrol driven by rookie driver by the name of Tom Mentz rolled over and injured five crew members and killed a driver, Mike Hickerson. This was the side of the incident. Tacoma 2009. This was probably the most infamous Monster Jam incident in its history. In 2009 at the Tacoma Dome, Gary Scott Jr. driving Natural High had a drive shaft break off of his truck, and at the end of the freestyle, Scott would run it over, catapulting it into the crowd, decapitating six-year-old Sebastian Heisey. His family, his family was obviously devastated and attempted to sue Feld, but was later dropped. The truck was retired immediately following this incident. Madison 2009, exactly one week after that incident, an independent show in Madison, Wisconsin, a truck named Holman's Beast driven by Samson driver Dan Patrick just got done racing and was headed back to the pits. However, at the same time, announcer George Eisenhardt stepped out onto the track and into Dan Patrick's blind spot. Before Patrick knew what was going on, it was too late. Eisenhardt had been crushed to death. Chihuahua 2013. In October 2013, Big Show was doing an exhibition when the truck lost control and drove straight into the crowd, killing eight and injuring 79. By all means, the worst monster truck accident in history. Netherlands 2014. Unfortunately, a similar accident occurred the next year when the truck Ural's King on Wheels, yeah, that's a name, lost its brakes and drove into a crowd of people, this time killing five and injuring many. The official number is not officially known. Unlike other incidents, the driver pleaded guilty on account of manslaughter. Both of the mentioned incidents were blamed on the lack of safety precautions. Every episode of Monster Jam is personalized. I never noticed this until recently, but I believe Monster Jam can read my mind. It knows my traits and my subconscious. No wonder I can relate to it so much, because it knows what I know. You know what I mean? When you, th when you really think about it, it knows what you need and it personalizes it for you and for every single person on this earth so that everybody has a different experience for everyone because no two people are made the same. In case you couldn't figure out, this whole entry is completely bullshit. Or is it? And that will conclude the Monster Jam Iceberg. I started working on this video in June, and I would have never guessed that this video would take as long as it did. But I wanted this video to be the defining video of my entire YouTube career. My magnum opus, if you will. I took long breaks from this project, shelved it multiple times, and I never would have thought that I'd actually finish it. But here I am. 
I absolutely hope I did this iceberg justice. When I made my first iceberg in August of 2021, I had just 100 subscribers at the time. And a year and a half later, I'm almost at 1,000 subscribers. I want to take this time to thank every single last person from the bottom of my heart for watching this video and any video on this channel and coming back for more every week. I don't know what else to say, but thank you guys for watching. And I will see you on the flip side.